part of the secret is that Jensen was Batman. He's right out of central casting. Everybody knows that Jensen was born to play Batman. Yeah, and you even dressed as Batman last year. I did. Oh, I did. oh you know, yeah, you did. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a Batman. And they're like, what? And then I was like, and it's a long Halloween. What? <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to EW's Around the Table. Today we are discussing animated film Batman The Long Halloween. We have with us actors Jensen Ackles and Julie Nathanson, writer Tim Sheridan, and producer Butch Lukic. Part one comes out on uh, digital and Blu-ray on June 22nd, and part two will follow a little later, digital starting July 27th, and on Blu-ray on August 10th. So that stuff is coming out soon, but from what I understand, uh, you guys have actually been working on this movie for a little while, uh, recorded a lot of the performances a couple years ago. So just wanted to start, like, what's it been like, you know, sitting on this, working on it for a couple years? You know, Jensen, you're, you're Batman, and you haven't been able to, uh, to talk about it for a while. That, that, was, that was definitely the, the most difficult part of this entire experience was just not, not being able to talk about it. <laughs> You know, it's obviously every, or most people I know, it's it's every little boy's dream yeah. to be able to get paid to say I'm Batman. So uh, that uh, that that was that was one I had to I had to bury deep and and try to forget about for a while because yeah because it was it was several years ago at least two right three yeah yeah it was three probably three we started three years yeah, ago recording three years again. ago yeah right yeah so um, now the reason reason that happened was because what happened was the Matt Reeves uh, film because he was, I guess originally he was doing mm, something yeah. with Ben Affleck. And and unfortunately, yeah, I mean, look, I get it. You know, that's a big budget movie. And, and it, it took, but we, I thought we were going to be shelved and I didn't know what was happening for a year until finally they gave us the, the, the green light <laughs> saying, well, they're not actually doing long Halloween. Oh, okay. So you guys can release yours first. So it could have been five years from the time you would see this movie. Yeah. Jensen, so Jensen would have exploded. Like his NDA, his yeah. NDA would have yeah. just fallen out of his face. <laughs> My beard would have been down to here and I'd be living in the mountains. Yeah, so life. really the best space. part about this is that you were able to shave. It's not a COVID so beard, it's, it's a Batman beard. Trim. You grow the beard until you can tell people you're Batman. Batman. <laughs> right, I was, I was just hiding from myself. Exactly. Yeah, it was... <laughs> when I was first allowed to to announce it, when the, when the cast was finally you know publicized, um, I think my post was like at some point that Batman the long secret I had to keep, and uh, and you know it's yeah. funny like part of, part of the secret is that Jensen was Batman. Jensen, I'm not going to lie to you, you were phenomenal <laughs> in this movie. So it was so exciting and you. wanting everybody to see and hear your performance and Josh's as well. Josh Dumel who plays. Um, yeah, Harvey. And and both of you are just so stunning in these roles. And so sitting on that and then, you know, I happen to very much enjoy my character and had a wonderful time and I knew how beautiful it looked. And I'm just like, yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> you know, I'd be in interviews. What are you working on? Just stuff. That yeah, just stuff. You got anything coming out? Uh, some, yeah, sometime there will be a thing. You'll you'll like a thing. It's a, circle back to me when you hear about the thing. We can talk about thing. Well, and also, you know, I'd like yeah, to bring yeah. up Naya Rivera. Yeah. Of course, she she obviously was involved in this, and unfortunately, because of the del delay, things happen. And I wish she was here with us mm -hmm. now, but unfortunately, th you know. Naya is really sad. She's magnificent in this too. She really she is. is. She uh, voices Catwoman in case uh, uh, the viewers haven't heard. Yeah. And yeah, I guess I, I wanted to, to talk about that and her role a little bit. Um, like I said, she's she's playing Catwoman, and Julie, you you are voicing Gilda Dent, uh, wife of Harvey Dent. True. Um, both of whom have pretty uh, big roles to play in this story. Um, maybe more so than in some Batman stories, you have these female characters who are um, really in the center of the story and, and not taking crap from the men uh, a lot of the time. So um, Julie, if you wanted to talk a little bit about um, how you find kind of the role of the, the female characters in this movie. There's a lot of, you know, duality in this particular film. And I think that would be, you know, par for the actual course. Um, but I think I think the the female characters have their own two sides. Um, you know, I I I see that very much. Um, I know I I hold that as as Gilda, and you know, having 
having sort of a um, her own personal space and and stuff that she's you know obviously dealing with and maybe her guardedness because of pain mixed with her desire to connect with her husband. So the women get to play with that duality too. The women get to play with that kind of strength as well. Um, and uh, Amy Landecker plays um, Barbara Gordon. Um, and, and she's wonderful. Um, I happen to like her as a human as well. Um, so, you know, I'm biased, but you don't have to be biased with Amy. Um, and, and just, there are just wonderful performances and, and Naya is spectacular as Catwoman and, and embodies so much strength and, um, and so much agency. Uh, so that was, you know, it was a delight and it's, uh, refreshing to see. In, in this one, you know, one of the themes that Butch and I started talking about in the beginning, one of the themes from the book that we really thought would lend itself to the, the film um, was that of a family. And, you know, we see uh, what Gotham City, what service to Gotham City is doing to the families that, that have built it. Yeah. To see, you know, uh, the home life for uh, some of our characters, obviously that's, central to I think one of the the great themes of of the long Halloween so thankfully we um we were able to to really um uh, crank that up a little bit and 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 we had such amazing uh, actors you know embodying those those uh, those women that I'm, I'm very grateful yeah there a lot happens in the long Halloween is kind of one of the things about this story and uh, so I kind of wanted to go back to the top um you know I would say Batman the Long Halloween, Butch, as you alluded to, the original comic uh, written by Jeff Loeb and, and drawn by Tim Sale. Uh, I have no problem saying I think it's one of the definitive or, or most iconic uh, kind of Batman comics, certainly of, of the last couple decades. Um, you were saying, you know, they, they toss it around for film adaptation sometimes. There are actually hints of it um, in the films we've already seen, like Carmine Falcone is a character in, in Batman Begins and all that. Uh, so I kind of wanted to ask... Tim and Butch, what was kind of your interest in, in taking this on and how did you kind of arrive at adapting this? Yeah, I mean, first off for me, it was, uh, we had a round table meeting with DC and uh, home video and there on top of their list always was long Halloween and why no one wanted to do it. And it's <laughs> like, uh, I was just uh, coming in as a guest at the time. And, uh, cause I just finished some series and the other guys were just like, well, we've already drained certain things out of those uh the stories that they put into their own stories so they didn't think it was relevant enough to go that way but i after the meeting i told sam redster and jim Cree, look if you want that one that's <laughs> the one i'll do and there you go that's why it's good and then we brought him in because he's he's one of our strongest writers and you know we had we had quite a bit of time to work out you know how we're going to make this work cinematically because there's certain things in the comics that were tough to that wouldn't wash if we had to do it. We sat know, down. I mean, I think the thing, the reason why people were kind of apprehensive about doing it, I would imagine, is because it does feel like a, a really big task to adapt the story, the the thirteen issues of the book, which you know, which is segmented by. by there we go. There's a clock. There you go. There it is. I mean, there's, there's a ticking clock throughout, you know, like a, literally a calendar. And that can be a little strange to do unless you're doing it as a as a, a monthly, you know, series or something. Um, so to do it as a movie, when I sat down to break out the story, I said, guys, I, first thing I said, I don't think I could do this in one movie. And, um, and everybody said, okay. <laughs> well, not not me. I wanted one movie because I wanted to get in and get out. But you know, two movies, fine. It's a testament to Tim's persuasiveness. Yeah, I, well, I, I, yeah I, just, I threw my hands in the air. No, everybody was on board. They said, "Great," you know. They said, "Go ahead and do it in two. I said, three. Because, <laughs> like you said, it it has this structure, right? Where it's like the premise is that these these killings related to um, the mob figures in Gotham City keep happening on holidays. They start on one Halloween, and the story kind of goes through this year long investigation to the following year's Halloween. And so every month or so has a holiday, and every holiday something big happens. And so I have to, you know, an adaptation 
there's there's stuff you can change and and I know you guys have have adjusted some things but but that structure is hard to get out of right like that's the long halloween is these uh this 13 month kind of thing I think it was our director Chris Palmer who kind of helped us in that beginning part to bridge a lot of this story into uh creating a main title with that so we could get rid of some of the excess and still have the story intact so you know what's going on because there's just uh, even in two parts there's still a lot of story you know what was really important to us throughout was we went in saying we you know you could do this as one movie you could do it you could but you would mm-hmm. have to make substantial changes to mm-hmm. the story as it was told by, uh, you know, Jeff and Tim. And, uh, but, but we, we, it, one of the things that we really felt was important was to, to keep it a faithful, as faithful an adaptation as you can. I mean, you're never going to be able to do a one for one from a, gra- a graphic novel and a movie are different. Right. Media. Um, but, uh, but to get as faithful and as close as we could, we felt it was, it was important to still, if, you know, you're not going to see every single holiday or every single thing that you saw maybe in the book, but it doesn't negate those things. Those things still exist. The, you know, hopefully you'll still read the book and <laughs> there's pieces that, that sort of, you know, the book fills in. There's stuff that the movie fills in for the story. Um, and that was kind of one of our sort of, uh, you know, guiding, guiding stars throughout the process. Julian Jensen, did you guys um, have any familiarity with this when it was first presented to you or or what kind of um, interested you about it? I mean, yeah, Jensen, we were talking about how you get to play Batman. It's kind of a dream role. Um, and not just are yeah. you playing Batman, but you're doing it in one of, like I said, one of, I would say, the most iconic Batman stories. <clears throat> that's And I think that's that's one thing to keep in mind. And this kind of goes back to what we were talking about, keeping this secret for so long, was it wasn't just... It wasn't just the Batman. It was it was the Long Halloween, which is just such an iconic uh, story within within that world. And um, that was a double whammy when I told my friends. <laughs> I, was finally able to, I was like, "Oh yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a Batman," and they're like, "What?" And then I was like, "And it's a Long Halloween." <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> so it was very very clear that this this uh, this story um, is you know obviously everybody knows Batman, but this one in particular was is, is certainly widely known. Uh, even to folks that aren't heavily into the comics, and and I, 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 that became very apparent to me just as as I was able to start to talk about it. Um, you know, originally they, you know, I'd, I'd come from a, a previous uh, film where I where I actually did uh, voice to Red Hood, um, and so when I got the call for this, it, I, I assumed that I would be reprising that that role back into you know whatever story uh, these guys were adapting. Uh, and then I realized that I had gotten the upgrade, so I, <laughs> <laughs> or at least the, 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 the option for it. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't even think they got the, the full Batman word out. I think it just, I heard, ba- ba- I like, yes. <laughs> uh, so, um, well, so yeah, no, I was, that's, that's just, that's not even something that, uh, you know, I had to think about. Um, no, it was a no brainer for us. And then, and then to hear, you know, that it was long Halloween and, um, yeah, I, I just again, it just compounded the fact that I had to keep this secret for so long. It was it was like sitting on a bomb. <laughs> yeah, and you even dressed as Batman last year. I did. Oh, oh yeah, myself. you did. I couldn't help myself. I, I, <laughs> I had this I had this wonderful uh, this wonderful um, uh, crew person that I was working with who who did who actually made handmade uh, costumes and cosplay stuff and oh and, awesome. She didn't even know. Wow. She she had done she had done the red hood a red hood version for me. Yeah. She's like, she's like I'm gonna. She's like I want to do a Batman. Would you be my you know mannequin essentially? And I was just <laughs> inside. I was just like, oh, if you, if you only knew. If you only. Oh knew, yeah, a Batman. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, and and funny enough, I think she actually she modeled it from the like the color palette and everything from the Long Halloween. Oh my god! Well, it was it was too much, and I was just like, "Yes, and this is going to be really. Fun. We're going to have a really big laugh about this in about a year." <laughs> Julie, I saw you brandishing uh, your copy of the comic earlier. Um, were you familiar with it, or had you, or have you kind of gotten inspiration from it um, as you've been working on this? I had not read the graphic novel, and I actually chose 
just for my own process. Uh, not to buy the graphic novel until I had finished um, the principal recording. Um, I, I wanted to really just stay in the one story I was being given and not try to see if there are differences or similarities and not get caught. I can get pretty analytical anyway as a person. So I didn't want to get too cognitive. I wanted to stay just kind of in Gilda and in her world. Um, so following um, principal recording, I uh, I did treat myself to the graphic novel. And now, <laughs> I'm sorry, what are you talking about? This old thing? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. I I mean, I took my wallpaper down before this. Um, but it's really easy to see why it's so beloved and why it's so iconic. And, and now having experienced both, I feel so excited for our fans to watch this movie. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, genuinely yeah. excited. I think... People have not only been waiting for the long Halloween, um, but they've also been waiting for Jensen as Batman. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of a fan, I mean, it's like my, my most liked tweet, I think, of the last year was when uh, when it got announced. And I, I put I, I shared the gif of, you know, of, of Jensen saying I'm Batman. And I just said, finally. And people went nuts. People went nuts. I remember <laughs> when you posted that. that. He's right out of central casting. Everybody knows that Jensen was born to play Batman. So I, I'm, I'm so excited for people to, to, to get to see this movie and, and see what he does. Yeah, it was really, it was, it was uh, uh, funny just to kind of go back to what Julie was saying, uh, that it, <laughs> like, I'd, I'd love to just, I'd love to just, you know, have the mic and be like, by the way, guys, I'm back. <laughs> and drop the mic and exit. But then I would come back and be like, but it's a long Halloween. You got to stay. It's, like, it's the whole thing. And then I, would, I, would, I would be like, see, look what I'm doing. Look at this. Look, it's so, it's such a, look at the other people that are, and, and I would, I would probably not act as cool as I would want to. Uh, but uh, yeah, but it's, it, it is that it's, it's of that magnitude. And that's, um, that's why we're, that's why we're here. That's why we're all excited about it. And what Tim was alluding to, there is that that moment in Supernatural, right, where you say it as like a joke, and right. so it's like we have that GIF, we have the Instagrams of you dressing up. It's almost like a, a trail of red too much. It's too much. This. <laughs> Either that, or he put all of this in motion, Jensen. Like, how long has this been in the works for you? Right. Listen, I read the secret. Okay, I put it out there. <laughs> and uh, Tim, you mentioned him. I was. Um, Rewatching part one again last night to prepare for this and uh the calendar man scene and david's like i just like can do i just like i'm so like hypnotized by him in that scene however long it is where he's just talking in this like he sounds like a a super villain and even though he's behind the the glass or whatever you're like and legitimately unsettled by him is he is the nicest guy you'll ever meet he is such a sweet <laughs> man. And he came in and just like turned on the creepy. It's yeah, so he didn't just, awesome. What's creepy is that he didn't have to um, find it, man. He just, he just switched right what? into it. In a way <laughs> that should unsettle question. all of us. It really should unsettle us all. That was my question because Whoa. the voice print, like, I, Jensen, I don't know if you feel this. You know, I think with Batman, there's such an iconic voice print to find and find it and make it yours. And it made me want to ask, I know this is your job, not mine, but like Jensen, what was it like? I wanted to ask you, what was it like <laughs> to find that that voice in you? Well, the biggest yeah. thing that, that, that Wes That's and, a great and I were, uh, were having a struggle with, I think right in the beginning, was uh, knocking the Texas out of me. Uh, that was, <laughs> I had to make sure that there was no, uh, that I, I didn't slip into a Matthew McConaughey. Um, <laughs> I remember that. Because that would be an odd Batman voice. Um, oh God, but I want to hear the outtakes so badly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so once, once, I, once I just kind of like started, you know, paying attention to that and stuff, it, it, it was really just, you fall into that, that Batman thing of, of that kind of breathy, you don't want to overdo it, but you just, you know, it's very, very controlled mm -hmm. and very confident and, and almost effortless. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then, and then the, the, the Bruce voice was, was simply just kind of like the outdoor voice, you know, it's, it's, uh, you got a little bit more vocal in there and you put a little bit more of your nose in there and you, and you just make it more of a of a natural voice but uh yeah, the batman one was just 
you know, I think I threw on my bedroom eyes whenever I was trying to play. That. What Jensen does, you know, if I can talk about him like he's not in the room, is, <laughs> is, uh, is, is the, the, um, the Bruce, you know, Bruce Wayne. It's not just about a sound. You know, Bruce Wayne is the affectation and Batman is the, is the guy. And I think you hear in the performance the um, just the, this extra layer to Bruce where he's he's putting on a little bit of a show for when he's talking to, you know, Gordon and Dent as Bruce Wayne. And um, it's 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 nuanced, and it, but it's really effective. And I think all the best Batman actors you know, have sort of mastered that, that angle on it. Um, and Jensen's no different. As Julie said earlier, uh, reading Long Halloween is, is definitely a treat, and, and I recommend any viewers to pick it up if they never have. Uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, the structure of it and how brilliant um, kind of this mystery is. Uh, but another thing that's uh, so great about the Long Halloween is, is Tim Sale's art, which I think is fair to say is, is pretty unique and distinctive. Um, Butch, um, could you speak to kind of developing an art style for the film that would both like kind of homage and channel Tim Sale's Tim Sale style while also, um, you know, well, the issue was I it? actually originally was I felt this I thought this was going to be the only film I do. So I know I was going to extend into other movies. So my my first thing was I was going to do Tim Sale's style. I was just trying to figure out at the time how can I make that work in animation? So I had about a few months to work, figure it out, but while I was working on other stuff and I was going to call Tim and uh, talk to him and see if he wanted to do some pre-production work so we could sort this out. But things changed during that period. And uh, James Tucker was leaving as a producer for the DC animated movies, which he was, you know, pretty much running most of them. And Bruce, Tim was, doing uh, his Elseworlds stuff. So they told me, well, if you're going to do Long Halloween, we need a style that's going to carry through through a, a series of films. So that's unfortunately I had to not, I, could, I didn't get a chance to do the Tim Sale look for this film, but I still try to retain certain things. Obviously, the uh, I think the city reflects kind of what I saw uh, in the books, definitely that Gotham is, you know, it's its own character and it always should be. I mean, it's an overwhelming, there's a great, you know, sense of design within that whole world of Gotham City, whereas some other previous uh, designers and things just made it, you know, wall to wall windows, windows, glass buildings. It's like, well, there's nothing creative there, you know. So I went back, I definitely followed Tim's. Uh, style and sense going that way and also his source of light uh, throughout all the book you'll see that there's a spot of light in the panel and then everything's what you know around it's dark but that's also you know film noir cinematography so we i just use all those uh things that he placed in the books which was stuff that i was already into anyway that's why you know i was buying his the comic every month and Batman the Animated Series and Long Halloween do something similar, I think, right? Where it's almost like purposefully anachronistic and there'll be maybe like an old phone or like, but there's also a TV, like it's kind of almost timeless or... Um, and that know, was not, also the other part. I felt, okay, yeah, place. I'll keep this in that timeless sense where the book is and what we used to do originally. And, you know, Metropolis will always be the modern city. And Gotham is the old world where you actually don't know, well, based on the cars driving around, is this the 40s? But then the cops are dressed, you know, more modern. So odd things, but that it, it fits and in that all, world. I mean, that's all integral to the story. You know, I mean, Gotham City, it, it, this, you know, Gotham City as a, as a city, I mean, right in the beginning, you know, Bruce talks about how this city has fallen. But fallen implies that it was once something great, or at least it could have been. And, uh, and so, so what Butch and his team did, you know, have done is to give a sense of, of history, you know, to it, which, which is where all the character is in Gotham City. It, it's beautiful, but it's broken. Um, and, and this is all part of trying to fix it. That's what we're doing. 
But that's also ref- th- that's the characters, beautiful and broken, and trying to fix it. And a lot of characters in this are broken. And, you know, actually, the, the one thing people tend to forget is this is the second year of Batman. So you, when you watch the, f- the movie, you re- you got to realize you're not getting this Batman that knows, you know, is perfect and, know, you know, pulls out the right gadget. He's a guy still learning his trade, and he's thinking, and he fumbles. So that is the Batman that this uh, year two Batman is. Of course, you know, we see uh, uh, when the story begins, uh, Harvey Dent just has one face. So that tells you that uh, we're relatively early in uh, in Batman's career. But also, one of my favorite lines, Tim, I don't know if you wrote this, but there's a great line that I think speaks to his relative inexperience in this story where... Um, you know, he's in the, the bat cave or whatever, putting clues together and, and Alfred is, is bringing him something. And he just says to Alfred, like, you know, I really didn't think that this would involve being a detective this much. Like I thought I was just wearing the bat costume and beating people up, but I have to be like Sherlock Holmes over here. And that's so funny because I think we so associate Batman with being a detective. So it's funny to him, be, him like yeah, he's still I mean, learning the it job. It's crucial, um, I think, to show that he's still learning on the job. I mean, there's a, there's a scene, there are scenes and there's one in particular with, you know, Batman and Jim Gordon where Jim Gordon is is essentially, you know, explaining to him how to do detective work. And, and you you see, and then the performance, you know. Yeah, that you're, too, yeah. You know, you, you, can, you can, and then, and I say the performance, and that's Jensen and the story artist working together to, to make this moment happen where Batman is putting the piece, you see, he's, he's a fast learner. He puts the pieces together as Gordon is telling him, this is how you do it. But yeah, he thought, and you know, what's, what's tricky about the long Halloween, one of the things, one of the things that's tricky is, it begins and all of, you know, many, most of Batman's rogues gallery is in Arkham Asylum. They, he's already gone through and swept the streets. And it's like, wow, he did that in like a year or two, you know? And, uh, but it's because of what he says to Alfred in that moment, which is, I thought this was just going to be, you know, about, about, you know, cleaning up the streets with my fists, basically. And it, it turns out this is so much, you know, there's so much more I have to do. Um, you know, and so you know, he settles in to do it. Julian Jensen, I wanted to bring it back to you guys, uh, especially going off what, what Tim just said about kind of what constitutes a performance in, in an animated uh, piece that's both your voice and the storyboard artist working. Um, I love how enthusiastic you guys are because I love animation and, and voiceover, and I think that performances in this uh, format can be just as, you know, thrilling and, and heartbreaking as, as live action stuff. Um, you guys have done live action and, and animated. Can you speak a little bit to, um, kind of what distinguishes voiceover performance and, and what well, Julie, you're the, you're the voiceover of, uh, queen. Powerful um, about them? I'm, I'm... Well, th- th- thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Just, I mean, your highness will do. Don't worry about it. Um, I am, um, well, it's interesting. I, d- I started out in on camera and, and it was lovely and I worked and it was really fun. And I found voice acting pretty quickly um, and fell in love with it and and ended up leaving on camera behind um, pretty easily. I found that for me, um, there was so much more room to play. Um, and there's something about being in this nondescript booth and having to imagine every single thing around me. And many times I have to imagine the other person I'm working with because I can't even hear them. Mm -hmm. For this particular project, it's another reason why I chose not to allow myself um, to take a look at the, uh, the source material because I wanted to actually not have a picture of her. I just wanted to see where my voice and uh, feeling would take her. And then to see how Gilda was depicted was just was so exciting. And Jensen, you've right. never seen an image of Batman before. So obviously this was this right. was a I, shock for you. I was shocked <laughs> that he didn't have talons <laughs> and weird wings. Um, I know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, well, you know, we were just talking about when, when Batman kind of realized that he had become more of a detective. And, and I, I, I remember doing this and I can't remember if it was in a cut, um, but just a simple, huh? And, and there, you know, a, a huh could be like, 
well, I didn't, I didn't know that. And now I feel stupid. Or it could be, oh, I'm figuring this out now. And trying to differentiate and really kind of hit those, those, uh, you know, it's almost like a, like a singer hitting a note, um, that you really have to, uh, you, you have to express yourself through, through your voice. And that was, that was really fun for me and, and the challenge that, uh, that I enjoyed. And, and like Julie said, the, the, the process is wildly different. And so this, this was, this was just to be able to exercise and flex that way, uh, while doing this character was, was awesome. Yeah. For me, whenever I'm talking about favorite superheroes, <laughs> it's kind yeah. of just like, well, obviously Batman, and then we can talk about, you know, Literally. everybody else or, or there's other cool people, but yeah, he's kind of in a class of his own. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for a great discussion. I guess I just wanted to kind of round it up by saying, you know, at the, at the top, we were saying this, this film, uh, took a couple years to, to complete. So just wanted to see if, uh, you guys had anything to add about what, uh, you're most looking forward to, uh, about fans finally getting to see it. Um, for me, it's, you know, I think this is pure Batman, a Batman film. It's, uh, you know, and it's, that's been a long while coming. I mean, we haven't done really a pure, strict Batman movie in years. So this is going right back to what, way back to when we did BTAS or Batman the Animated Series. I, I'm excited to see how people respond to what Butch and Chris Palmer and and the the rest of the team have done visually. I I think humbly, ha having nothing to do with the art uh, in the movie, that they have leveled up in a way that, um, you know, in terms of cinematic scale and, um, you know, uh, the, the richness of the visual life that they brought to the, to the story. Um, I, I think um, when you look at it and you look at the great history of animated films, I think this really stands out and raises the bar myself my humble opinion. I hope people, some people agree, but uh, but I just love looking at it. It's a sumptuous feast. <laughs> I kept being pleasantly surprised as I was watching by how quiet so many of the moments are. And there's so much space in between, even in between lines to let something sink in or because in natural speech we don't always David Mamet our you know dialogue at each other and you know I I think I had imagined that it would be noisier and it's so wonderful because it's quiet because it it almost has a simplicity and this is a complicated story so it lets, to me, it lets the artwork, the visual artwork stand out. And I, I couldn't agree more, Tim. I, I, it's, it's really beautiful. Uh, I'll say to touch on uh, what Julie said about the, the quietness Aww. of it. Uh, it reminds me of one of my favorite moments uh, of doing this, which, um, which was after a lot of the, the, the animation was done, we go back and, and, uh, and I had to do a lot of uh, fight efforts. Um, chasing the chasing the fight, you know, with the oof <laughs> and the rah and all, all of that stuff. And one of my favorite moments was uh, was Wes would be like, I don't know, do we uh, do, do we think that that punch would hurt Batman? And <laughs> Butch would just unmute himself and go, No. And then you know, <laughs> and Butch, Butch made me cut so many of my fight efforts because. Because he's Batman and he doesn't get hurt. He doesn't get the wind knocked out of him. And that was, uh, that was one of my favorite moments because uh, I'm so used to, you know, over, do overselling the fight efforts and all the other stuff I do. But this was, uh, this was a pleasant surprise and I enjoyed that. Right. Yeah. It's Batman never does this, huh? You know, so. Yeah, he doesn't need to make an effort to, awesome. to punch. He's, he's Batman. No. Leave him alone. <laughs> I love that that's the answer to any question. He's Batman. He's Batman. He's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much, Jensen Ackles, Julie Nathanson, Tim Sheridan, Butch Lukic, for joining this discussion of Batman The Long Halloween, part one coming uh, June 22nd and part two following later this Thanks, summer. Uh, this has been EW's right, Around you. the Table. Thank you.